I'm Miss Dowd, uh, one of the school counselors at Calvert Hall. Mr. Fan uh, asked me to help out in the culinary club to um, do a Hispanic dish. Um, and so I'm originally from Costa Rica. And so I wanted to pick a dish that was pretty typical there, um, not too fancy, and also using um, some easy ingredients. Um, the good thing about this dish is that you can't mess it up. Um, and also the amounts of the ingredients, it's really up to you. Um, and the crock pot actually does most of the work. So what we're gonna make today is called ropa vieja which literally means old clothes. It doesn't sound too appealing, but um, what it actually means is that once the beef is cooked and shredded, that it actually looks like it's old clothes hanging on a clothesline. Um, I'll, well, it'll make more sense once you see the, the finished product. Before we get to the actual dish, we need to make what's called a sofrito. Um, and what sofrito is, um, every country has their own version of sofrito, um, but what it usually consists of is onions, garlic, and tomato, um, and usually bell pepper. Um, and every Hispanic family has a jar of sofrito in their refrigerator. Um, it's what you start everything with, whether it's stews or soups or uh, meat, dishes, uh, rice, anything. Um, and so what you would do is chop up all your vegetables, put it in a blender um, until it becomes kind of a paste, and then you put that paste in the, in the refrigerator. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna make the sofrito. I'm not gonna put it in the blender because I do want there to be some texture in the, in the finished product. Um, so we're gonna make the sofrito and I'm actually going to um, cook it and saute it before we put it in the crock pot. Um, we went to the store today and there was very sad looking um, cilantro, okay? And so what I ended up doing was um, instead of just cilantro in our sofrito, I'm also gonna add some, um, some parsley. Okay, sofrito. Uh, I'm gonna, I've already started chopping some stuff because I didn't know how chopping and talking were gonna go. So um, I've got probably three onions. I'm gonna add a, another small fourth one. I've got probably maybe seven or eight cloves of garlic uh, and I'm gonna add one more. You can obviously adjust that. I know that there's some people who um, don't like garlic I don't know who those people are, but I like garlic. <laughs> um, I've got a can of diced tomatoes. Again, the tomatoes didn't look so hot today, so I decided to use a can. Um, and because we're actually cooking it, um, it's going to get a lot of flavor from the sauteing. I am also adding jalapeno. You do not need to do that if you're not into spice. Costa Rican sofrito doesn't usually have a, a jalapeno pepper. We're, we're kind of wimps when it comes to spicy food. But um, I just thought it, would, it was there and I thought just to add a little bit more flavor. Add that there. In the meantime, I'm gonna turn my skillet on. I have a cast iron skillet. Um, obviously you don't need one. I'm in love with this one in particular. Um, it is my husband's grandmother? Grandmother. Her gra his grandmother, uh, Lillian Croswell Dowd from 29th Street and Greenmount Avenue in good old Baltimore. Something tells me she was not cooking ropa vieja in her cast iron skillet. But it's been seasoned for, you know, decades and it just cooks really evenly. Um, and because what we're trying to do is sear the meat, um, there's nothing like a cast iron skillet for that. Um, 
If you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can use whatever skillet you have. The idea is just to get, a, get it piping hot before you start adding your ingredients, okay? Jalapeno pepper. The spice of the pepper is in the seeds, so you can put as much or as little seeds as you like. Make sure not to touch your face afterwards. I know we're all in quarantine, not touching our faces, but with um, jalapeno peppers, um, if you get it in your eyes, and I'm talking from experience here, if you get it in your eyes, it will be tragic. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna take most of the seeds out, again, because I really like the flavor of the jalapeno, but I'm gonna keep a few in there. Okay, we're just gonna dice this up. There's that. Okay. So let's get started with this. Onions, ton of onions. My family makes fun of me because um, I cook a lot uh, on Sundays for the rest of the week and everything I cook starts with onion and garlic. So my kids say, you know, that uh, instead of waking up to the smell of pancakes or like waffles or something like that, my kids wake up to the smell of onions and garlic. I mean, what could be better than that? All right, so seasoning every step of the way. Um, I think it's, it's super important you salt and pepper your food after every addition of, of new stuff. So we're gonna get a nice good color on these onions. I've got, um, again, probably eight or nine cloves of garlic. We're gonna get all of that in there. We're gonna get our jalapenos. Uh, and then I'm also gonna get the, the diced tomatoes. Again, fresh is better if you're gonna keep it in your refrigerator, but because we're cooking it right now and then it's gonna go into a into the crock pot, it's fine if it's if it's canned. All right, I'm gonna get this really nicely sweated down and then we'll turn to the beef. Okay, so this has been sauteing now for about 10 minutes or so. Um, and what I'm gonna do is add in the cilantro and the, and the parsley and just add it. I just took the, the leaves off the, the bigger stems and you can just give it a rough chop. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. Smells awesome in here, if I don't, I do say so myself. I know it looks like a lot, but it's gonna cook down. And again, I probably would have put more cilantro in there, but there wasn't a whole lot left. Okay. Give that a good stir. See how it cooks down? Doesn't even look like there's a whole lot. And there you go. You've got yourself a really good sofrito. All right, so we're gonna move that into a bowl. important when you're cooking beef like this um, I'd like to get it up to room temperature out of the refrigerator um, and put it out like this um, so it can actually dry out a little bit um, you want the, the surface of the beef to be dry in order to get that really good that really good sear now it 
it's not super important that you get every last little bit because it's all going to be cooking together. Um, it's good that all the flavors are going to marry. Um, so again, we need some olive oil in here and get that steaming, steaming hot. Um, you can also take up a paper towel and just dry off your beef. Okay. And then you are going to salt and pepper it. The other thing, when you're trying to sear a piece of, of beef, you can't touch it, you can't play with it, you can't do anything. You just gotta put it on and leave it alone. Um, and you can't like pick it up and try to peek and see what's going on in there. You just gotta leave it. Okay, don't forget to salt and pepper the other side. And I, to be honest with you, I probably put it on a little too soon. It, it, um, the pan wasn't hot enough. So you're going to do this probably maybe three minutes on each side, but just leave it. Okay, so we seared off the beef, um, and I put it in the crock pot. I like to um, warm up the crock pot before I, I put anything in there. Um, um, I'm gonna take all of this sofrito and I'm gonna dump that in. Now the thing with crock pot cooking is just to make sure that there's enough liquid in there for the protein, whatever protein you're cooking, to stew. Because I used canned tomatoes, there's probably a little bit more liquid than, than um, there would have been normally if I had used regular tomatoes in the sofrito. Um, if um, you find that it's a little dry, you can just put in some jarred tomato sauce. Um, I make my own tomato sauce. That's another segment, but it um, really, you have more control over the, the ingredients of it and it's super easy, but I'm, going off on a tangent. Um, so, sofrito in here. The other things that I like to put in is a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. In Costa Rica, there's a sauce that's called salsa inglesa. Um, I, um, I ran out, so I don't have any, um, and I doubt that I'm gonna be able to find it in the middle of the quarantine. So, I'm gonna use a little bit of Worcestershire sauce for some richness. Um, I'm gonna put cumin. I mean, it's in everything. Um, and when you think you've put enough cumin, you're gonna put a little bit more. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna do maybe two, uh, a little bit more than two and a half uh, palmfuls. And then the other thing that is always in Costa Rican cooking is adobo. There's different types of adobo, and I picked this one again because it has um, it has cumin in it, um, and again, you can never have too much. So we're gonna just give this a little sprinkle. I would normally put um, salt, um, another thing of, of salt and pepper to season, but because everything that I'm putting in has so much salt, between the adobo, the um, Worcestershire sauce, and then also, um, this is another big thing in Latin cooking. Um, it is um, olives and capers and pimentos. Um, and as yummy as the mixture itself is, it's the, it's the juice that comes with this that is like liquid gold. Um, and so what we're cooking here is a pretty rich dish. Um, and you need something with acid to cut that. So whether you use, um, again, I know there are people out there who don't like olives. I don't know who they are, but um, if you don't like olives, you can use vinegar, you can use um, 
red wine, even just anything to cut through the, the richness of the dish. So I'm gonna do maybe one, two, three, um, to mix that in. And let's see how much liquid we have in there. I think we're okay right now. Um, if at the end, I find that it's um, a little dry, then I'll put some tomato sauce in. Okay, so we're gonna do this on either low for eight hours or on high for six hours. You can definitely do this on a stove top in the Dutch oven. Um, you can do it in a pressure cooker. That's the way my grandmother did it. Um, I had a fight with a pressure cooker once and it won and I'm like, petrified of pressure cookers these days. I haven't used one since, but so pressure cooker, stove top, crock pot, again, you can't mess it up. So I'm gonna cover this up and leave it alone. Okay, so um, this ropa vieja that we're making um, goes with anything. It can be for um, quesadillas or you can make your own burrito bowls. Um, it's like the, at Chipotle when they do the pork barbacoa, um, but this is way better. Um, the other thing, and typically in Costa Rica, what you would have this with is white rice, uh, tortillas, corn tortillas, and then some sort of salad. Um, and the, the most typical one is a shredded cabbage salad. Um, this is something that people make in the beginning of the week and just leave it in the refrigerator and it actually gets better as the days go by. Um, so I thought I would just throw it together really fast for you guys to see. So just regular cheap old cabbage. You're gonna thinly slice the cabbage. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then, um, I, I saved some of the, the parsley. Um, again, I, I feel like I keep on talking about this. There wasn't enough cilantro. It's typically made with cilantro, um, but parsley works just as well. So give that a chop. Put that in there. We're gonna do some tomatoes. These were just great leftover grape tomatoes that we had hanging out. It's really whatever vegetables you've got. You know, if you've got some carrots or some celery, go for it. There's, um, it's just the cabbage is the, is the thing because it's gonna sit, you need something that's a little bit uh, heavier. The salad won't work if you use like spring greens or whatever. And then again, put that in there. And then this is the simplest thing. It is red wine vinegar, a bunch of red wine vinegar because that's what gets in the, in the cabbage. Red wine vinegar, olive oil, and salt and pepper, and that's it. And then all you do is you give this a really good mix. Um, you cover it with some plastic wrap and put it in the, in the refrigerator. And as I said, the longer it sits, the better it gets. So I, um, I think it's great when you, after you put your beef in the, in the crock pot, make a quick cabbage salad and then by the time it rolls around for dinner time everything's going to be going to be set so i'll see you in a few hours okay so we're back and we are six hours later if you want to take a look inside here you can tell that we definitely had enough liquid um i think those those canned tomatoes really did it 
And so what, uh, the only thing that's left to do now is to shred the beef. And so, um, and you can tell that it's like literally falling apart here. So I'm gonna grab this. And if it weren't so hot, I would probably just do it with my, with my hands, but um, it's a little too hot. And so you just take two forks and you shred it like this. I've got my two dogs here waiting for something to drop. <laughs> So there we go, and you can um, you can get a real fine shred if you want, but this looks good to me. Um, and I get, see, this is where the old clothes comes from, right? It looks like clothes hanging from a from a clothes line. Okay, and now the only thing left to do is to put it all back in the sauce. This stuff is really great to freeze. Once it's all cooled off, you can just put it in a um, in a gallon Ziploc and put it in the freezer, um, and it will keep for for a while. Um, my favorite thing to do this is this was actually my after school snack when I was uh, when I was going to school. Um, is to put this in a in a corn tortilla with a little bit of that cabbage salad that that we made earlier, and it, it was it's delicious. Give it a shot. Again, remember that every country has their own version of um, of the both the ropa vieja and the sofrito, um, and you can't mess it up. So I hope you give it a shot and let me know how it goes. Thanks everybody. Thanks Mr. Fan for for volunteering me.